When it comes to fats, what we find out that there's really one villain, and that's called trans fat. So although some trans fats occur naturally in foods, most trans fats are a result of processing foods. So you find them a lot in um, things that taste really delicious but aren't that helpful for our overall um, health, such as donuts and french fries and other processed foods. So women that even consumed a small amount of trans fats in their diet seem to have a bigger risk of having difficulty conceiving. Caffeine is another substance that people have a lot of questions about, and caffeine for many of us is part of our daily lives. So um, when, it, when you look at caffeine and risks of either not getting pregnant or having a miscarriage, there does actually seem to be a safe amount of caffeine that women can consume. So we typically recommend that most women don't have any more than between two to 300 milligrams of caffeine a day. But how much caffeine that is depends on what you like to drink. So for example, um, women who drink soda, a lot of diet sodas have about 50 milligrams of caffeine. If you like to drink coffee, it also depends on how you make it and where you get it. When you make coffee at home, a lot of the regular brewed coffee tends to have about 100 to 150 milligrams of caffeine per cup, but some of the supersized coffees that we get at our favorite coffee house might have double or triple that amount. Many women are very surprised when they hear that uh, once you stop using birth control, it's actually the exception rather than the rule to have difficulty getting pregnant. So it's been studied many times and when women discontinue taking birth control pills, for example, we actually expect that under normal circumstances, most women should either already have the return of a period or be pregnant within three months of stopping birth control pills. So many women are under the impression that once they discontinue using birth control pills, it's going to be several months or even a year before they expect that their period would return. But actually that's abnormal. So I usually recommend to patients, if you discontinue using any type of birth control and you haven't had a normal period within three months, number one, we should check a pregnancy test and number two, we should evaluate you further to see if we're missing something else, like a thyroid problem, that could keep you from getting pregnant. Every OBGYN loves to see a patient before she's actually pregnant. And we know that about half of the pregnancies in the United States are unintended, so we don't always give that, get that chance. But when we do, we like to focus on the patient's ability to be able to optimize everything about your health before pregnancy happens. So for one thing, we typically recommend that um, you have an ideal weight before you become pregnant. So women who have weight that's either too low or too high um, can have difficulty conceiving. We also look at the medications that you're already taking because we know some of them aren't safe in pregnancy. Lifestyle factors are also really important. So if you smoke, we're going to strongly recommend that you stop. We're going to look at how much caffeine that you drink and how much alcohol you consume or any other recreational substances you might use. So we also take into consideration if it, you are a candidate for any genetic testing. Do you have any history in your family of certain diseases or disorders that we might want to look for ahead of time? And probably the most important thing that we recommend is to make sure that you're taking a prenatal vitamin with an adequate amount of folic acid before you get pregnant. People are always very curious to find out if they can influence whether they have a baby that has a pink blanket or a blue one. And there's not really reliable ways, but people have actually looked at this since at least the 70s. So one theory is that a sperm that carries a Y chromosome doesn't have as much genetic material as one that carries an X. So the idea behind this is that sperm that are going to eventually create a boy baby swim faster and sperm that create a girl baby swim slower but are stronger and um, last longer. So um, there have been theories that the, the closer you have intercourse to when an egg is ovulated or released, the better chances you are to have a boy um, versus the further away, since sperm can live inside the reproductive tract for a few days, the better your chances um, would be to have a girl. The studies have subsequently proved the chance of that working is a coin flip about 50-50.